Rocco's vegan, vegan life.
But in racing, a lot of times I had trouble crossing that, that barrier, right? Because there was competition, there was other people, there was results. This was the time that it counted, right? A lot of times I, I, left, I, I gave up, I, I sat up too early, I didn't give 100%. So this time, all the pressure was on me. There was a lot of media here, there was a lot of, a lot of people paying attention, a lot of, it was on live television in the US. Um, I was not ready for this challenge. But I had my idol sitting there in the bus staring at me and said, you're gonna do it, you're gonna drop these guys, you're gonna win by a minute. Because I needed to be deployed by a minute um, of brass town. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna do it. And how am I gonna do it? Well, I'm gonna ride exactly like I do up the climbs by my house, which is I go full gas, I don't worry about other people, I go as hard as I can from the start to the finish, I don't look at anything else other than what I'm doing in the moment with the climb, and then I get to the finish line. So we take on the race, we get out there. I don't know if you guys remember the stage, it was snowing. It was like crazy weather for Georgia in the, I don't know when it was, I think it was April. Snowing, super cold, and all day I sat behind my, my team. Every single climb, up and over the, the, the different six gaps. My team rode super super hard to make it a, a hard race and make it hard on Floyd and, and Levi and those guys. But I ate my, my nutrition, like I ate my food. I kept uh, a cool mindset. I kept focused on what I was doing, what I was going to do. I wasn't staring at my competitors. I wasn't worried if I could do it or if I couldn't. All I knew is I had this dude, right, that I looked up to my whole life. He believed in me, he said I could do it. I sat behind him all day long and. It, when I got to the base of uh, Brass Town Ball, I attacked. Didn't think about anything other than doing it the same climb that I'd done at Lookout Mountain, Mount Washington, Mount Evans, whatever, all the way to the top. And crazily enough, I ended up winning the race. Won the stage, beat Floyd by over a minute, and took the leader's jersey. Absolutely crazy, right? First time in my career I'd ever done anything like that under that sort of pressure. It was a massive, massive breakthrough. So from that day on, with that experience, one would have thought that I would have taken that and progressed and turned into a Tour de France winner and, and replicated that performance over and over and over and over again. Right? But wrong. I didn't. Because I didn't pay attention to all the things that actually mattered that enabled me to do that performance. The only thing that I paid attention to was what everybody else was saying. Everybody was saying, holy crap, you're the next Lance Armstrong. Oh my gosh, you're amazing. You're the best climber in the world. Like, look, you've won against all these guys in this giant, in this big race. Like, for sure, you can do that in the Tour de France. You can do that in all these other races. But I never did. I didn't come close. And the reasons for that is what I'm going to share with you guys today. Right? There's a lot of things in my pro career that I missed. Important things. And I focus on... The results. I focused on what other people were, were saying. I focused on what had happened in the past. I did not focus on the ingredients that enabled me to perform that way on that day. So the first thing going into tomorrow that I want to share with you guys today that I learned in hindsight becoming a coach now working with other people that helped me be successful on Brass Town Ball that's going to help you guys be successful tomorrow in six gap and in three gap is first your mindset. For me, as a young kid, with all the pressure, the mindset side of it wasn't a big focus at all for me. I didn't even care, right? I was young, I was just out of college, I was like this next hope or whatever. I listened to everybody else, but that day, Lance got in my head and he told me, he laid out the objectives that I was going to do for that day. I hadn't done them in the past. I didn't truly believe that I could do them, but I had someone that just basically hand-fed me objectives. So as a coach today, I call them targets, and that's what I was kind of alluding to with you guys before we got started. Is tomorrow, the number one thing that you guys can do to have a successful ride, a successful six and three gap, is set targets. Just like on Brass Town Ball, Lance was like, you're going to go up this climb the same as you did in your training when you set the records of Mount Washington and Lookout Mountain these climbs. You're going to do it on Brass Town Ball. What did that do for me? 
Anyone have a guess? Turn the line. Gave me reference. I had done that before. I had gone, a, I had climbed a certain way up Lookout Mountain. I had climbed a certain way up, up Mount Washington and, and Mount Evans. I could go back in my mind and watch that movie again and again and again. So when he gave me that reference and he said, Tom, climb like you did on these climbs. I had that movie to watch. You hear about like in, in, in pro sports, in the NFL, right? They watch film over and over and over and over again, right? They watch themselves perform. To replicate it or to improve it in the future, they're able to create that visual and then react to that. How many of us watch video of us performing before? Not a whole lot. Now on Instagram and Facebook, we get a little bit, right? When your friend wears a GoPro on the ride, but not too many of us are actually looking at our past performances from a constructive point of view. How many of you guys like have, have had a badass performance in the past? Come on. Everyone's hands should come up. <laughs> That's your goal, right? That badass performance that you had in the past helps you set targets for tomorrow. So guys, going into tomorrow's ride and just thinking about that, Thinking about your best, your most badass performance. I heard a lot of you guys say, hey, I want to beat last time. I want to do better than I did last year. Can you guys see that right now? Can you see what you look like? Can you picture the place that you've had that performance? Yes. So that's step number one for crushing it tomorrow. Is think about the course. We've got six climbs, although I think there's more than six climbs out there. <laughs> very Juro-esque, right? Like kind of mystery cl hidden climbs in there. But there's more or less six big climbs tomorrow. But that's not all, right? We got some downhills in there. We got some flat sections. We got some, some rolling terrain. We have some wind probably. We have some heat and humidity. So I want you guys to think of all those components that you had there and set some targets out of that. This is how well I've done with this, these conditions and these components in the past. Now I'm going to extrapolate and I'm going to take those past performances and I'm going to stick those into the key parts of the ride for tomorrow. So me personally, right, like I have some, I have a really wide range of reference points, right? I have the 2005 Tour of Georgia and I have the 2017 uh, Six Gap. Big difference in my fitness between the two. Right? And now I'm a little bit better shaped than this. So how do I look back and say, well, I've had some really grand slam performances and I've had maybe not some so good performances. How do I pick my targets now? Do I go back to the 2005 tour of Georgia to pick my targets for tomorrow? Well, I did 400 watts up brass town ball, so I should be able to do that up hog pin tomorrow. Right? Wrong. That's a long time ago, right? A lot has changed. So, I'm going to take my targets and I'm going to base them off what I've been doing the last couple months because that's the most relative. But I'm going to take how I felt and how I looked and how I feel about myself from all the performances and I'm going to put that together. And we all see this, right, in people that have been successful in the past, right? Maybe some people that are ex-pros that are in your categories or, or you know, top-level amateurs. And you wonder, well, how do they keep performing really well? They're not training. They're maybe a little overweight, whatever. How do they keep doing it? And that's how they do it, right? They've got that little extra sprinkle of mojo from having done it in the past. They drop it on top of, right, their current fitness, and all of a sudden you have a really good performance. That's how important it is. So going into, when you guys leave here and going in tomorrow, I want you guys to really think about some targets that you'd like to make that are connected to what you have been doing. Okay? Super, super important here because this is how you win your run. Just a quick plug. So what you just watched was a former pro rider, Tommy Danielson's Six Gap Clinic that he put on it was free so got to give him much props great appreciation for all that and i hope y'all enjoyed it give this video a thumbs up if you liked it thumbs down if you don't leave your comments down in the comment section below i hope y'all enjoyed it as much as i did it was a great experience it was a lot of fun all right y'all